Hello everyone, it's Dmitry Anoshan and Servalytics and today we on the fourth lesson databases in the cloud on the model 2. As you should know, the model 2 is about database in the SQL. The SQL or SQL is one of the key skills that you need to work uh, with data analytics. Doesn't matter on the role, data engineer, data scientist, analytics engineer or data analyst or BI engineer, you still will work with the SQLs. That's why before doing any complicated stuff, I want to make sure we understand the databases, we understand the SQL. And this particular lesson, because the previous lesson we talked about data models, we learned about dimensional modeling, we learned about uh, what kind of data models exist, normalization, why it's important. So I hope you did some kind of assignment, how to use the superstore data set from the single table and how you can build your dimensional model for superstore data set. And you might use any software you want, you can use SQL DBM, you can use DB Diagram or anything else. You can use just the PowerPoint to design the data model for this use case. That was uh, the key idea. Today we want to talk about database in the cloud. Before we only focusing on databases that we install on your local machine. And we only install the Postgres, you can install the same way MySQL or you can install the SQL Server Community Edition that is free. They all good for training purpose. As you know, most of the companies now rely on the cloud. The cloud knowledge is required for any roles, not only data, but most of the role for the modern force. Probably the same as like around 20, 30 years ago, every role required the knowledge of Microsoft Office products like Excel, the PowerPoint, the Microsoft Word. Right now, the same with Microsoft Cloud. Since my course is about data analytics, so we'll tailor the cloud analytics fundamentals towards uh, the data analytics. Just the cloud fundamentals towards analytics. I will have dedicated model, model 5, about the cloud computing fundamentals and we'll learn more about this. But for now, we just want to do same things what we did before using Superstore dataset, but now we want to create the cloud databases and trying to load the Superstore dataset into cloud databases and then connect it from DBiver from our local machine. We'll talk about a bit of security, firewall, networking, IP, how you can able to connect it. And then probably we'll try to push your data from the local machine, your Superstore dataset in the cloud data warehouse and query. In the next lesson, 2.5, we'll focus on data visualization on top of databases, since it's the most important topic. By the way, don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I will publish lots of more new videos. I will publish uh, interviews, I will publish uh, projects and if you want to learn more, you can definitely join our community in Discord where we actually doing different kind of projects, uh, short projects, the long projects. We learn how to pass the interviews, people going for the interviews, answering sharing the questions and their experience and help each other to uh, achieve their goals and build successful data career. So let's get started. How it worked in the past. We have our local databases on the personal computer and we also did some enhancement of this process. We used the Docker container and we able to install the Docker container and pull the image of the Postgres. And we also copy the Superstore dataset. We might have Excel connect to the database or we can use the SQL client that also able to connect to the database. The key word here is the local host or same as 127.0.0.1 that means same local host IPs. It's nice to work with this machine, but probably your friend couldn't join easily your container with database or your database, as well as you use any cloud services, how you're gonna connect your local database. It's not designed for this, it's nice for testing. That's why we should do something to be more close to real world applications. How we actually work? Imagine you have your personal computer, you have laptop or anything you have that the given at work with Excel, the SQL client or BI tools, anything. This is your local host and there is a database somewhere hosted. It might host in dedicated uh, server room in your office or maybe in the cloud, doesn't matter. 
Usually this IP has the public IP address or related DNS, like this db.myworld.ru and dedicated port. You already should know about the port and the way how you might connect it. The important piece here is the firewall. By default, the all ports shut down and no one can access this database. That's why the system administrator or any other person who has admin access for, for the server, they can enhance the firewall and security rules to let your IP to access this database. Sometimes, and especially with remote work, many companies onboarding VPN as a service, you connect to VPN, it moves you virtually to the network close to the same network area your resource is located. Your VPN client, you can install your local machine and there are many like Cisco VPN, one of the most popular. All the cloud providers has VPN or some companies doing their own. This example in particular, we're talking about on-premise database. It could be in your office. You imagine you have several room in the office and you, you work remote and you're connecting via VPN. It looks like you're still in your corporate network. That's the purpose of VPN. If we're moving to the cloud, what will happen in the cloud the database will be hosted in the cloud. It will host it still in data center, but now it will the data center managed by public cloud, AWS, Azure, or GCP. All still the same. It has the public IP, it also has the private IP, it has DNS, it has the port, there is the firewall to change and you're able to access. If we talk about something more specific, if you designed, for example, using AWS and create your first cloud databases, for example, using Postgres, then you might go with the service that calls AWS RDS. Every public cloud has lots of different services and they have different names and purpose. You don't need to know all of them, like I mean, Azure, GCP, AWS. You actually need to know just one of them really well. And it will be very easy to switch you. Fundamentally, they're all the same, just have different names. Especially when we talk about data analytics, your scope is not quite big. You don't need to know lots of services. Of course, outside of some databases related really things, you need to understand a bit about security, about the networking, and we will cover this topic in the Model 5. This ideal project, what we want to build, is the outcome of this lesson. If in the past we were running like some Postgres locally with the Docker containers and we were able to leverage the data models and build the data models, so now we actually want to build um, all the same, except we want to host databases in the cloud, and then we're able to connect with dBeaver to the cloud databases. I want to briefly tell you about the available options for cloud databases, because there are lots of different types of databases. Not too many. There are not only relational databases, and we cover this already. There is NoSQL databases, and in the cloud, uh, you can find all that. This is, for example, screenshot from AWS. Maybe it's not super up to date, but you see there are different types of databases. What you need to know as a person who works with the data, Amazon Redshift, we definitely will work a lot with this. In the Model 6 is a cloud data warehouse, one of the first cloud data warehouse that's still on demand. And right now we have lots of projects, for example, migration from Amazon Redshift to Snowflake or to Databricks due to some constraints. And you will learn what are the constraints. You will learn how to design data warehouse in Amazon Redshift. But here, only things that matter with Amazon Redshift, with Amazon RDS, and Amazon Aurora. It's like similar, but it's managed database. It means you don't need to care about administration of this database. Another one, the quite popular database, this is Amazon DynamoDB. This is NoSQL databases, and sometimes it's used in backend. In one of my Q&A, I answered about the role of uh, NoSQL databases, and I answered the question, do you need to know this or not? The short answer is no, but you should be aware that some organizations using as a backend DynamoDB and then data engineers might pull the data from DynamoDB. There are different ways you can do it using the streaming, you can use the batch. We'll do more of this during the projects uh, in Surfalytics and overall during the lessons, maybe lesson model number six, model number seven. For now, you just need to know that there are like not many databases you need to know. The same idea in Azure. In Azure, the NoSQL databases is Azure Cosmos DB. And they also lever give you lots of options for Azure SQL. And of course, you have MySQL in Azure 
there is the term serverless that also will talk about model six what does it mean is it relational database or not is it document or not and you see the cosmos db is actually have different flavors azure sql database this is the managed instance of sql server for postgres and mysql they they don't have the managed versions of it and the last one is gcp databases for the warehouses and uh, traditional data warehouse it's big query the relation database, the service calls Cloud SQL, MySQL, Postgres, and they have also some other type of databases. And again, working as a data analyst, you maybe will phrase Cloud SQL and BigQuery. That's it about databases. Now I want to show you a couple of resources that you can start learning already that to enhance some knowledge and not waiting for the Model 5. And also I will talk about how you can get the trial and then I will show you how you can create the database in Azure and in AWS. Hopefully this will be enough for you to create the database, then find the way how to push the data CSV file inside the cloud database, how to change uh, security configuration to let your IP to access this from DBiver and how to pull connection details, the success criteria of this lesson that you're able to connect. In the next model, we will look into the way how we can connect the same cloud databases. In this case, we're going to use BI tool for this purpose. And we will use the same Superstore data set, but we will try to push it to query BI tool and build some dashboards. Now let's check how you can get the free trial account. Every vendor, not only public cloud, but Databricks, Snowflake, Matilda, they all give you free trials. And then you're learning and searching the job. This is the only way how you can efficiently trained with the modern tools and not paying for this, just leveraging the free trails. Planning to write the blog post about this and highlight the key services that you might need to use and how you can leverage the free credits. This is an example how you can sign up for Azure. It will give you 200 credits. There are a bunch of services that free by itself. It's very important as soon as you sign up to know how you can track the cost in the cloud. Every public provider has the billing dashboard and this is the way how you can do because you don't want to this space you go so probably you will start it will require your credit card but it won't charge you and you can track everything the best rule you build the resource you try it you use the the smallest possible database or anything as soon as you finish you just uh, turn off and terminated this you could even delete it if you want to get some knowledge about azure and never worked with the cloud before I recommend you uh, check what is AZ900, Azure Fundamentals. Another closest exam is DP900. It's the data fundamentals. They both really helpful for you. And you can get even just reading this, you can trying to pass the exam. Very often you can monitor for different Microsoft events and then give you voucher for free exam. That's quite good. All what you need to know just to read and understand. And also, especially that they're covering lots of information, just fundamental information, the model one and the model two, and even model zero, it might be helpful for you to pass this exam. The next one is AWS. AWS, their starting point is a cloud practitioner. This is an essential training. It is free, well described, and it's overlapped with Azure. So first, like what's cloud computing, the benefits, and then dive deep into the services with some hands-on experience on the key services. This is just the page, how to prepare for the certifications. I often tell about the certifications that you actually don't need the certificate by itself because there is no value, but the vendor trainings, it's usually is the best thing to do. This is the AWS free tier. So you can get the free account. It's for 12 months free. You probably has uh, lots of, not lots, but probably the same $200. Here you have EC2, the virtual machine, the five gigabyte of storage. That's very helpful for the data. You see another thing that we might need. Let's check the database, for example, what we have. So we have 750 hours of Amazon RDS, and this is probably the way that you can start if you decide to create the smallest possible database. Just make sure that they have different instance size and you need to pick up the right one. Uh, let's move. Next one is the Google Cloud. They have the same way, so you can sign up you get, can get the credits, you can get the services. You see, even their cloud data warehouse BigQuery, it's allowing you free for one terabyte per month. 
I believe they have some Cloud SQL things and um, you can see what kind of resources. So before you start using resource, you can see how, how much free credits you have. Is this resource is free or not? Maybe it's in the free tier. In terms of certification, I found there is a simplest one called Cloud Digital Leader. And I believe there are lots of resources about this. The next one is a cloud engineer and then they have specializations. All the cloud vendors, uh, they have the same idea. They give you some base things. For example, in AWS, the next good one usually is um, AWS Solution Architect that covering lots of things and especially helpful for, for anyone who wants to build something in the cloud or even just to understand how the things work in the cloud. Because it's not about databases as said. It's only security, like different policy permissions, reach the networking topics and some key services. So that's why Solution Architecture in the base in AWS is definitely good training. This is uh, some trainings on Google, or lots of different trainings on the Google. Now I want to show you console. This is AWS console. This is my account and actually here I host my rockyourdata.cloud website uh, using LightSail uh, service. Today I want to tell you everything you might need to know. First of all, on the Model 5, we will do some deep dive into networking and AWS, it is VPC. AWS account required, you have to the VPC by default. You can think about is your virtual network where you will build resource and it has IP addresses ranges. So any resource we're going to create here, it will start from this. This is CIDR notion. So it's telling what's the IP address range. We also can see what else it has the road table. It has network ICL. It should have the subnets. It has two subnets and you kind of like divide your VPC by IP address. That's the two subnets. Usually subnets could be public and uh, private. The road tables, internet gateways. So the internet gateway on the diagram that I show you a project, the Beaver internet gateway inside VPC and subnet. This is basically connecting your VPC and all resources in the public subnet to the internet. In the production, we don't use the public subnets. We don't want our resource connect internet because we don't want the hacker prevent to hack our systems. And there are different ways how to build and design the system. For the training purpose, everything could be public. We don't have any sensitive data in our databases. All is fine. Just want to show you this quick thing. Um, and if you decide to create database, then probably you can go to your RDS. Here you can create the new database instance. You can click the create databases. You can choose what kind of database you want. Probably the Postgres will be fine. You can choose free tier. You can choose the database name. You can tell that it's the Postgres username. We can generate the password or we can just type. I can type simple password. Instant configuration, it's this size. If it's in free tier, it's totally fine. There are some additional configurations. It's using default VPC. We can keep this default VPC. Availability zone, we can choose, we cannot choose, doesn't matter. Certification authority to make our connection secure. If we like everything, obviously we like everything, we can just proceed and create. We don't want feedback. While it's creating, we can go to Azure. Azure is slightly different. Azure usually starts from subscriptions. I have my subscription. Usually it's this very sensitive data, but since my subscription is uh, will expire soon, anyway, uh, it should be a big problem. Uh, outside subscription, yeah, we have my account and then I can have multiple subscription. And this is different from AWS. Here I can have resource group. This is just logical grouping my resources. For example, I can go to resource group. I can see does it has any resources. For example, it has already one databases. I can go to these databases. If you want to know how to create databases, I don't want to create it. I can just go and show you example. 
Maybe not fall. Can use this one. Can click create. We need to choose subscription. We need to choose our resource group where we want to store. Then we can type the name, region, the version, development. Again, they give the cost, availability zone. Maybe we can even, why is this possible to make it even smaller? If I choose it's even I think I, I have the the smallest already. What else we have? Authentication method, we can use the user and password. We can use also Microsoft Entra. This is old Microsoft Active Directory SSO for with my Microsoft user account. The networking I can already, because by default, this database will not allow me to connect from my IP address. So I can add my IP address here, or my, I can do it later. I can also tell it is a public access. Maybe if it's public access, I even don't need to do this, because if it's public address, I can adding this. It means everyone will access this, uh, whatever one. And in terms of security, we can uh, do encryption key. We can add the tag, review, and create. And this is um, exactly the same database that I already created, and we're using in uh, inside of Surfalytics, people doing DBT, and they running some analytics, connecting Looker to this database, and running dimensional models, and, and so on. So, on. so we have some projects that are using this. What's the most important, as soon as we create the database, it has the server name, we have admin login, I have the information about this, probably cost me like around $20 a month. That's not expensive. Security settings or settings and we have the connection. This is the connection guide and we can see how to connect with the Beaver. We have the host, the port, the database, the username, the password that we created. We need to choose that it's a Postgres database and you know in the in the model tool we already covered how data, we usually connect to the databases. As soon as you create databases, your next step uh, you will figure out uh, you can create the table, you can create the DDL based on Superstore dataset, but the next step you can figure out students of Surfalytics were very creative how they create this and loaded the data, but you need to figure out how to copy the data. You can do insert statement. You can write the Python script that will connect and push, or maybe there are better ways. Maybe it supports the way that we can copy data from Azure Cloud Storage, upload the file and push the file. It's usually the best uh, thing to ask is ChatGPT or join the, our Discord and learn how others are doing this. That's it what I want to show. I don't have any free accounts for GCP. Everything very similar. It's just different UI. Sometimes you need search and you need to get used to My point, if you even don't have now the real job that you need to do the cloud, you still need to do the practice to better understand how this works, what does it mean, and so on. That's it for me. Just a summary, your homework, you need to choose any cloud provider, create the cloud database, ingest the data, connect your debeaver to be able to run the SQL queries. And keep the, your credentials because in the next model, we want to connect cloud BI tool and do first cloud dashboards connecting the cloud database. That's it.